me and Lebanon in the interview, we a certified crew. Trying to cross eyes, something I wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. I'm like you, but maybe times two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll go with that. I wish <laughs> truth is, if you don't see me around no more, I've been linking with people. Hi beautiful souls, it's your girl Lebanon, and this is my newest show called Chop It Up, a show where we dive into the experiences of people who inspire me, we dive through culture, their journeys, and how they came to where they are today. So today I have a very special guest with me, his name is Selassie Draw, he's a full-time musician here in Edmonton, Alberta, originally from Ghana. So welcome to the show Selassie, how are you? Thank you. I'm doing good. Thank you. I'm going to play a game called Chop Choices with you. Oh, so okay. So I'm going to get, it's kind of like a this or that. I'm mm -hmm. going to give you a couple options and you're going to let me know which one you would choose and why and how it relates to you and I'll also answer. The first one is early riser or night owl? Early riser. And why? Because um, I think it's good for me. I'm not an early riser, but I still pick that because I think that's what helps me, even though I hate to admit it. Yeah, I feel the same. I feel like at night I just work better, yes. but I know that if I was to like do things earlier, like your day becomes shorter because by the time the day ends, you're not like, oh, I have to do this. You've yes. already done it. So yes. I want to. So we both aspire to be early riders. Yes, for sure. But like the night just gets the creative juices flow. <laughs> for sure. For sure. No, that's like exactly. That's me. it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so sp in creative spaces, whether it's like the studio or maybe you're writing, would you rather collaborate or you prefer doing it solo? Oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, collaborate, but it has to be the right people, the right moment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For okay. sure. Collaborate. I feel like for me, I have to do solo first. Yeah. Because I have to like sit down and think before I launch and like try to share like gotcha. any ideas that I have. Um mm. So the next one is, because we're both Ghanaian, mm -hmm. jollof rice or washi? This has been a debate online. Are you serious? Well, like through Ga like for Ghanaians. Interesting. I'm, I I missed that. Um, that's tough. Wache. Same. And like, Wache. I don't know if you heard that song with Usher. It's like a long time song. In one part, it sounds like he's saying, Wache, Wache. <laughs> and people like, jollof is good. But like, there's just something about Wache just hits different. For sure, for so sure. That's why I'm team Wache. But jollof is good. Like, and I'll never deny it. Yes. I think it's also sometimes because like, maybe it's made a lot and we're used to eating it a lot. Yes. So like, we don't really enjoy it as much as we feel like we should. Yes. So I think that's why I'm team Wache. Yeah. Okay. Next is music festival or an intimate gig. Which one do you would you prefer? Whether it's like performing or attending. Festival. Why? um just that crowd interaction you know having like multitudes of people engaging with the music that in some ways can be intimate you know i feel like you can make you could turn a big venue into an intimate show but you can't do that with an intimate show necessarily okay off the top that's what comes to mind yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i feel like for me i'm like a mixture of both because i feel like music festivals have a certain energy depending yes. on I think it also depends on the genre yeah so I feel like if I'm listening to reggae there can be intimate moments but like when I went to reggae some fest I liked that it was a festival when I went mm. to Afrochella or sorry Afro Future now I like that it was a festival but I feel like something like jazz or like soul or neo soul mm -hmm. or even R&B I would prefer that in an intimate space. intimate yeah. yeah yeah how yeah. about you do you feel like it also depends on like the type of music it does depend on the type of music. Also, um, I really appreciate intimate shows more. Like, um, I don't, I'm still like energetic and mm -hmm. upbeat, but I found a part of me that's also very calm and like chill. Like over the years, I've become very chill. So I like to be in spaces that are chill. So I'm really appreciating like intimate settings. Mm -hmm. But if I had to choose one over the other, I would only pick festivals because I feel like I could turn a festival intimate as as a Ooh, performer. Okay. Yeah. No, I would. I, I feel like I know how to do that. Okay. And yeah. how would you do that? Dig, let's 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 dig deep. How <laughs> I'm would very you do particular that? about my song choices. Mm -hmm. I'm very, regardless of the perf the venue that I'm performing in, I always make sure that some way somehow I'm connecting with my audience. Okay. And so be 
because that's my MO, like mm. regardless of why I am, I feel like I can make a festival intimate. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so like for the future, would you ever wanna either part like participate in a festival or create your own? I would have to create my own in collaboration with mm. other people. Yeah, okay. I would need some uh, people with me. I feel like I have my ideas, mm -hmm. but when it comes to creating an experience, I always feel like, you know, having more more than one person is always a good thing. Okay. Yeah. What would you call this festival? Like it doesn't have to be the tentative name, but like off the top of your head, like what are people like hearing? Like when they think of Selassie and you're like, this is a festival I'm putting on, what would that what's that name that you What is that name? Mm -hmm. What's a synonym I'm thinking of a synonym for the word the word experience, because that's all it's gonna be. Um I should know this because I'm studying English right now, but <laughs> <laughs> Oh know. good. We we <laughs> both don't know it's don't, okay. <laughs> I can't think off the top of my head. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. You can come back to that. Yeah. Um, so next, we're going to go into Proverbs, because I feel like West Africans and Africans, we mm -hmm. we our ancestors and our forefathers and our parents love to speak in Proverbs. Yes. And usually involve some sort of animal. Why? I guess because we have a lot of animals back home. So obviously, I want to pick an Ewa proverb. The thing is, I'm not going to say an Ewa because, you know, we're, we're still learning the language. Yes. Small, small. But <laughs> <laughs> this is what it is in English. And I'm sorry for all the Ewa people out there. If it's the wrong version, please forgive me. This is what Google said. So the proverb is, the crab gave birth to a bird, but it still walks sideways. Do you know it? That sounds so familiar. Okay. Yes. So how would you, what does it mean to you and how does it like kind of connect to your own life? Your heart might be into something, mm -hmm. but you don't want to be absorbed by it. You need to learn to take another path mm -hmm. and let go of what your heart might be into. Because mm. um, if you think about, you know, someone giving birth, mm -hmm. you know, you you have an attachment to your child, right? But also there's a lot of mothers that don't take breaks enough mm -hmm. or defined by themselves by like motherhood, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the need for, you know, putting yourself first sometimes, mm -hmm. even though like that's your child. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah. Now, of course, this <laughs> might not be what it means, yeah. but that's the first thing that comes to mind when I hear that. Okay, yeah. so from what I got from the meaning and what Google is telling oh, me, <laughs> it says like, um, this proverb is often used to illustrate a situation when someone tries to achieve something beyond their capabilities. Yes. Um, it implies that even if sometimes something seems extraordinary, it's essential to stay true to oneself and acknowledge one's limitations. I guess when they're talking about, but it still walks sideways. Yeah. So it's yeah. like something that you have that's a part of you that like maybe you try to diminish, but you, it's still there. Yeah. It's still there. That, so. that makes sense. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. I like that See, one. We try, we try. Shout out to Google. We try small. Okay, so you told me a few of your favorite artists, and I tried to keep it light. So we're going to play like a little game, guess the lyrics. This one's going to be so tough because I have be... a bad memory. No, but I feel like these are very common, common like things that no, anybody should know. you don't understand. <laughs> like, <laughs> when I say I have a bad memory, okay. I listen to a lot of music but cannot remember. Okay, so okay, we're going to. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so let's, let's do go this. to I'm Kendrick. I'm ready for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this song, complete the following. See, this is very simple. Sit down, be humble. What's the after that? Be humble. Sit down. Yeah, be humble and then sit down because he repeats that, that phrase like a couple of times. Okay, I think I gave it away because I said yeah. <laughs> We tried, we tried. <laughs> Let's try this one. Okay, so... Um, Jay Z mm -hmm. and uh, Alicia. So I guess you know the song. Okay. Concrete jungles where dreams are made of. There's nothing you can't do. In New York. Now you're in New York. Now you're in New York. See, it's not as bad as you thought it was gonna be. It, it is not bad. Yes. It's not as bad. Okay. Um, next one is Little Sims. Um, this song. I'm the coldest. <laughs> wow that is tough i'm the coldest do i get a song title 
wings. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm not. I'm not even gonna pretend that I know. I'm not. I'm not gonna pretend. <laughs> okay. So it's. I'm the coldest. Uh -huh. Young and oldest. I wouldn't have guessed that. I'm not even gonna pretend. What do you think you're on Earth for? Like, what do you feel like is your purpose? Oof. Do you feel like you've had you're figuring it out still, or it's something that you're you figured out? I don't know if this is vague, but mm -hmm. I think my purpose is to be present and to experience things. It's funny, I was thinking about it recently and I realized who I am. I think I appreciate like good experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be anything, but like when I wake up in the morning, I have to be very intentional about the way that I do things, mm -hmm. and I have to enjoy those experiences, whether it's driving, eating, drinking water, like literally from the most like mundane everyday things mm -hmm. to the to the big things, I just have to enjoy myself. And I think for me, that's like my purpose. I need to like, when that coffin closes, I need to feel like <laughs> I had a good time. That okay. was lit. That okay. was lit. I think that's my purpose. Okay. Yeah. I feel like for me, I'm still figuring this out. I feel like I I didn't really think too deep into this question until like probably this past year. Yeah. So I met a girl in LA, diverging from that, I think. And she asked me what my name was and I told her. And then the things that she said to me, I was like, this girl doesn't know she's preaching to me. So. I told her, hi, like, my name is Lebanon. She's like, what does it mean? I said, it means take great care of her. This girl said, I hope the person in your life or the people in your life or who is to come into your life is able to live that. Wow. <laughs> I'll wow. never forget. Shout out to her. Sent by an angel. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I was like, okay. I think it also means, like, to take care of myself. Like, yeah. Why would I put myself in spaces or situations where I'm not taking care of myself? Yeah. I think my purpose is to take care of myself, take care of others, but also to, I, I really have a deep passion for young women, young girls, especially in the African continent. So I feel like my purpose is to create better futures for them. Yeah. So I'm still trying to figure out ways because I really want to get into like the philanthropy field. Do you feel like you've been most inspired by it can be something from like pop culture it can be from maybe your family relationships friends like what do you feel like okay this i was so inspired by this hmm i think for me can i can i list two yeah okay i think for me it's two artists and the first one is Kendrick Lamar, and it was when he released Good Kid, Mad City. And one thing artists do is that when they go big, they're like, oh, I made it. I'm in the spotlight. Okay, more mainstream music. Let's just milk this thing. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget him doing To Pimp a Butterfly and then downsizing the venues. Like, he only had, like, a couple of shows. They were super intimate. And the subject matter was just not for the masses to consume. And if you were expecting a certain kind of content, you were really disappointed. Mm -hmm. But that's when he showed me like, oh, you can do this thing with integrity. Like you really don't have to like sacrifice a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I think, um, cause I'm, I'm a little younger, I guess. I think the second one is just Drake. Mm -hmm. Cause I appreciate how he, has infiltrated the mainstream um in some ways i appreciate how he he does it in some ways and i think that's been nice to look at yeah i wonder if that ans answers your no, question no it answers it there's because so it's many something moments. yeah there's so yeah. many moments and things that like end up like making you give like giving inspiration yeah and giving you that creativity for me recently mr easy came out with a project called i think it's called evil e genius or evil something and like I feel like I've been like following Mr. Easy from the beginning till you now. Have. I'm like you a have. fan. I'm you a have. fan. I know that. And I think like I like that he never stays in one box. He yeah. gives us something different. And yeah. I think his creativity and different things, like you can never get the same thing from him. Mm -hmm. He'll do this and then he'll do that. But like maybe it's still connected to music, but he still will like go to Rwanda and work on like certain things or mm -hmm. like go to Benin and throw these like chop life parties. Now he's doing like a sound system. Like I think 
he shows like there's no limit to like your creativity mm -hmm. whichever way you want to be creative like mm -hmm. go for it so that's what like i feel like inspires me okay next question who is that one person who you feel like supported you when no one else did and this is your time to like give them their flowers wow <laughs> Wow, what a question. This is so tough. There are many people. So if you're watching this and I don't mention your name, I'm sorry. It's just the question. Um, there's one person I'm going to say, and that's my mom. Mm -hmm. Only because I remember. I'll never forget when I was like, she was, we went to Best Buy together. And I wanted to get a lot laptop. And I was in uni at that time. And I was like, this is so expensive. The only money I had was my student loans. Mm. And then she asked me, she's like, do you need it? I was like, yeah. She's like, are you going to do this? Is this something that you're excited about? Like, you really want to invest in this thing? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, you should go for it. And that literally changed everything mm. because it's that same laptop that I took with me to like Toronto when I had a show one time. And um, another time I was in um, I was in Winnipeg, it's that same laptop. And there was a couple of shows. Um, I don't have that laptop now. Mm -hmm. I just replaced it like three years ago. Mm -hmm. But I'll never forget going to shows with that laptop and being like, wow, if my mom didn't push me and say, do that. It's something that you love. You should invest in it. There's so many songs that even people hear that would never have happened. So mm -hmm. many shows that would never have happened just because of that laptop. So that's the first person and first moment that comes to mind okay. when I think about that. I'm like, it's because you said one, I'm like, let me say one. But my friends, I love you. Do not come and hurt me. I love you all. And you've all supported me. So please, please, I beg of you. It's a tough one. <laughs> it's, it's really tough. a tough it's one. It's tough. You're going to break um, some hearts. All right. But um, I don't think it's about supporting me. But the group of friends I have, mm -hmm. my girls, um, when I was in Ghana for Christmas 2021, December, um, it was Christmas time, and they invited my mom, like, for Christmas dinner. And it's not like my mom is alone and she doesn't have my sister or anybody else, but it was just, like, they didn't have to. Yeah. But, like, it was just the fact that they thought of my mom and, like, oh, like, let's invite her for Christmas, like, let's include her. Like, it really warmed my heart and, like, it's something I'll never forget because it shows, like, my friends care about more than just me as their friend and like oh everything is like self or mm -hmm. like oh Lebanon 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 but like they care about like those around me they care about my sister they care about my family they care about my dad like it really touched my heart and it's like one thing I will never mm -hmm. forget mm -hmm. yeah that's beautiful yes shout out to them don't get don't kill shout us. out to the good friends shout out to, <laughs> shout the, out the, good to friends. the girlfriends okay so now I'm curious about your creative journey if you could just describe your music in three words what would they be and why um passionate is the first one mm -hmm. um because i i do feel like i i approach music with with passion like period like i really care about what i do what i say how it feels how it's going to resonate like there's no one on the planet who thinks more about their music than me like mm. i i put my thought into that so i'm really passionate about that um the second thing Second term to describe my music. Um, real. Um, I try to be as real as possible. Um, being real is, uh, is tough. And people always like to be like, you know, be prideful about it. It's not something that I'm prideful about. It's more like this is necessary just for me. If I want to grow, I have to be honest. I have to be real with myself. Um, and then the third one I'll say is interesting. I think I'm an interesting, I think my music is interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, um, while I am passionate and I try to be real, I also don't have this tone of like, oh, if you're not in this space then you know, you cannot get it. I think I make really fun and interesting and like accessible music. Yeah. Okay. So I want to dive into the next segment called court, Culture Corner. So basically, you delve into the culture. You know, I did some thinking. I did some okay. thinking. So when I first met you, you were in high school. Yes. And I think I you recently so. came from Ghana. Or am I wrong? 
I don't know how recent, but like, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember they're like, oh, this is the last thing you just came from Ghana. And you're just like, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> like quietly oh, to gosh. yourself. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I think keep to myself. I think a it was lot. you and your brother in like a room or something. And then they're like, oh, oh. this is the last thing you came from Ghana. And then it was like, so you, did you come from um, Ghana to Canada, specifically yes. Edmonton, for high, like during high school? Or was it before then? Yeah, I, I went to high school. So I graduated out of like junior high in Ghana. Oh, okay, okay. And then right after that, before going into high school, I came here and then I went into high school. Okay. So yeah. I want to get into kind of like your memories in Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, what was, first let's start. What was like the initial thought when your parents were like, okay, we're moving to Canada? Like what was on your mind? What did you think? Were you excited? Had you like seen pictures or videos of, of Canada? You're like, okay, well, of course I want to go there. Like what was your perception? And like how did you feel when your parents told you that? So when we were in Ghana, we had a lot of pictures because my parents, like, they had traveled the world a little bit because of work and different stuff. So I really wanted to see a lot of the places that they had visited because they used to tell a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. And um, my dad also went to school in Canada. And so um, he would always bring stuff back home whether it's like it could be something as simple as a pen mm -hmm. or like a, some flavor of like granola just all these little things that you get excited about as yeah. a kid and yeah that made me curious about wanting to be here for sure so yeah i was i was pretty excited i was pretty excited when when we left so how was that transition like um how do you feel like the move impacted you um coming from ghana to here and have you ever like felt felt torn between both worlds of like Canada and Ghana? Mm. I wish when I was in Ghana, I had traveled the world some more. Mm. Not going to live there, but you know, spend a couple of weeks here, spend a couple of weeks there, come back to Ghana. Yeah. Just so you don't have perceptions about the world, but you've actually had to experience it. Mm -hmm. And I would say like, I, and it, it's part of being young. Mm -hmm. You You have perceptions about the world as opposed to like, experiences of the world okay. um in terms of feeling torn um i do i do <laughs> but i think recently i kind of accepted i'm like oh yeah this is my new home mm. is that there's there's a little bit of a denial i don't know about you mm. but like do you feel that a little bit of a denial like um ghana is my home i don't know if i'm off here or i don't feel like i have a home right now <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> like i don't i just like as long as I was in Ghana, I want I say it's home, but do I feel it's home? It's I home. think it's like two different things. I think I'm still finding a home. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm I think there's elements of both places that I would consider both home. Mm -hmm. But I'm still kind of navigating what home is, what that feels like, what that is. So you're neither here or there. For yeah. you it's it's both. But like there's always a longing for wanting to be there. Right. Yeah. Right. Like when I'm there, do I want to be here? Mm. I think like when I miss moments with my friends and family mm -hmm. and then like because I travel so much, it's like, oh, I wish I was there for this person's birthday or like to celebrate this or I don't know what's going on. They have to catch me up. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like I think it's like fear of missing out on like because I've built that community and family here as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's where for me it's I feel that I miss um, being here. Mm, mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maintaining your Africanness or your essence, since you said you've kind of come to terms with how you feel about being like kind of in these two worlds, mm -hmm. what would you say what are some things about yourself that you've noticed that are still very Ghanaian or African that are very authentic to you? Wow. Interesting. What an interesting question. <laughs> question. Um, Ghana is like my reference for everything. Okay. You know, like if um, usually the people closest to me, they get to hear me say certain things. Mm -hmm. But like it's my reference for everything, like food. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like so much processed food here, <laughs> like just too much. When I was in Ghana, I used to eat yeah. yams. I, I, I wasn't ripping bags open and like yeah, eating yeah, yeah. food. Like it's my reference for that. Uh, uh -huh. It's my reference for community. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like. Ghana community is uns unspoken. Like it was literally part of my life. Mm. And I feel like 
in Canada, people strive to like engineer that, like, because mm. it's not really a strong part of the culture as it is in other places. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, yeah. but like you go to certain cultures and you're like, oh, this is really how they live. Like they're very communal. Mm -hmm. Like, um, so there's that. I, I'm like that. Um, I think like I'm overly like respectful. Okay. I was I was literally <laughs> just saying that like yesterday to yeah, someone yeah. like Ghanaians like we're overly like we're raised to be like respectful saying and please after humble, everything saying please yeah like <laughs> please yes please yes <laughs> please, no. please no please no like it's like it's just too much and yeah. like everyone's name has to have a title like yeah. uncle brother you can't use first name like mm -hmm. there's still parts of me that are like that yeah. yeah I would say for me I think my mom's gonna hear this and be like I told you. I feel like I'm turning into my mother and I never, I was like, oh, no, no, no. but like, I think it's like my reactions to things. So like, let's say like I fall down. I'm like, Hey, like, that's like my first thing. Like sometimes I feel like I'm not listening and speaking in English or like, let's say so, like something my mom would say to me when I was younger, if maybe I did something, I'll be yeah. like, I'll like speak it out. Like, um, let's say like someone falls or, or like, if it's like, you do something, you're like, eh, it's like, yeah. it's like all these little like things that she would say. And I'd be like, am I turning into <laughs> her? Yeah. So yeah. I feel like those things, other than like cooking the food, I feel like definitely like, reactions to things is very like ingrained in the culture. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you feel like that with the food thing? Like you do feel like you're, you lean more towards like Ghanaian. Oh, I have to eat. Well, there's, I like different cultural food, but I have to eat Ghanaian food. Yeah. Or what? Or it has to be West African adjacent, like yeah, consistent on a consistent basis. Yeah, yeah. For me, it doesn't have to be Ghanaian, but it just doesn't have to be processed. Okay. Because I don't know about like other people who are from Ghana, but mm -hmm. when I was from when I lived there, like I wasn't eating as much processed foods. Yeah, because everything started to grows. That. You, like, yeah. you, it grows from the ground. Yeah. But I think it's changed a bit. I wouldn't say it's, that it's more processed now. I think there's there's a lot more stores that are bringing in things from other countries. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. people are gaining access to processed food. Like cheese right. is not a part of our diet other than like wagashi, which is like a cheese from the North. So like that is like our cheese. Yeah. But like obviously people want like pasta or whatever. And yeah. they have that right to, but like they're processing it from who knows where Elsewhere. bringing it, yeah. you know, like yeah. all those things that like we have here, they have there. So I feel like now it's kind of changed a little bit because mm -hmm. it's like you can go to the grocery store and get what you need mm -hmm. and diets have changed like a, a mere bit. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what I would say. Okay, so when is like the earliest moment you remember kind of listening to music um, and just feeling drawn and connected to it? Um, the earliest is when i lived in ghana and my dad would go to work and i'll just take his cds mm -hmm. and like put it in a walkman and mm -hmm. like listen to that those would be my earliest memories like as early as like age six okay. yeah like super young and what was your dad listening to like what were my you hearing when you to everything okay like my dad one time i messaged my dad when stoneboy's album came out mm -hmm. um oh, something junction i forget the title um, Angloga Junction. Angloga Junction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, when when that came out, I remember saying that to my dad. I was like, you're really going to enjoy this. I think you're like, he's like, oh, yeah, I've heard it. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Are you, you're really on the internet uh -huh, like that. Like, uh -huh. you've already heard this. But no, that's my dad. Like, he just, like, listens to everything. But the CDs that I was taking mm -hmm. were, um, I remember it was Nas. It was 50 Cent. Mm -hmm. And then he had some reggae, like Gregory Isaac. Um, those are, like, the early 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 seat music that i was listening to okay yeah uh for me music wise it's so funny because like the church i grew up in we weren't not that we weren't allowed but there was kind of restrictions to like music so i wouldn't say i heard more like gospel growing up but my mom was very much into like james brown anything nice. like motown cool and the gang um that kind of like era and then she also introduced me to a lot of like um, fella or people who were like mm. in Ghanaian high life or Ghanaian um, Afrobeat, mm -hmm. those like type of rhythms. Cause I do like the kind of like that vibe. Um, it doesn't even have to be anybody singing, but just mm -hmm. like the music of like high life 
um, and Afrobeats. It's rich. Yes, it's yeah, very rich. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, CB saw. Yes. CG, okay. Yes. That one. Yeah, that was one yeah, of her faves too. Yeah, for so sure. So that was definitely it. So when you decided, when was it that you decided, like, you know what, I want to pursue music full time. I want to put like this into full force. High school. Okay. High school. Yeah. High school. Like. At that age, you have a little access. Like mm -hmm. I, I got an iPad mini mm -hmm. um, and I started recording on the iPad okay. and trying to learn how to mix on that iPad. So like early, early demos that I mm -hmm. used to put out on SoundCloud, they were actually all recorded on my iPad. So it was, yeah, it was high school. It was that time. Okay. Yeah. I feel like it took too long mm -hmm. though, because I feel like I grew up with the mentality of like, you know you can't be a musician, right? Like mm -hmm. you're from Ghana. Like, well, you better be something else other than you know, like an entertainer. Mm -hmm. Was it like that for you growing up? Um, was that an option in the no, Mauto household? No. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that it wasn't an option. It was just like, the, like entrance. It was just like, oh, people do it for fun. Yes, but not like, oh, you're getting paid to do this. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think like over time, it took time for my parents to like be like, you know what, she's good at this thing. Let's I think it was just like my mom was like, just go and do something at school. Like, I, I yeah. don't care what it is, just go. Because yeah. I was just confused as to what to study and what to do. And I tried different options. Yeah. So she's like, just go do something at this oh, that's, point. That's nice. I mean, that's not <laughs> it bad. took a long time for us to get there. <laughs> but how do you feel? How do your parents take, like, you saying, you know what, like, I want to do this full time? You know what's funny? I don't even think I've communicated that overtly. They just mm. watch from the sidelines. Okay. But I do feel a sense of like stigma against just being an artist. It's just like, uh, I doubt you're going to be, you know, doing something if mm. you just stick to this. So I think that I th it's unspoken. But my guess is that they're glad that every t while I was doing music, I was always in school pursuing something else. I think mm. they appreciate that. OK. Yeah. OK. So I know that you work with your brother summer breaking. Yes. OK. Yes. I'm going to make sure the right name yes. is correct. Within and you recently have a single Grease, Greasy, Greasy yeah, yeah, yeah. with him. Yeah, what is that like dynamic like working with him, like in create in the creative process? It's amazing. Like when we're together, I'm like, wow, I really grew up with this guy. <laughs> like, well, there's so many things that aren't spoken. You say something, he's like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm thinking of these drums, and I'm like, yeah, those drums, right? And they're gonna do this, and then we're mm -hmm. gonna, you know, compress it this way. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just. It's so beautiful and so I wish I collaborated with him earlier. Like mm. it's so instinctual the process. Like it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I, I love it. I don't know if many people know, but you're part of the I wanna say African dance ensemble. Sengue. Sengue African okay. performance so, group, yeah. I was with you when you joined. Yes. And it was it like it took you four months to learn the drums, or you were just like, how many? Like it didn't take you long, and you were just. It did not take me long. Like yeah. you just picked it up. Yeah. Really yeah. fast. Yeah. So my question is, like, how do you feel like Sange? Is it Sange or Sange? Sange. Sange has kind yeah. of like enriched your musical journey, and how do you bring that experience that you have working with them and performing with them into like your life as a musician? um it's made me want to include more like live instrumentation mm. in my music mm -hmm. so actually when we did greasy um my brother actually solos on that song oh, like okay. some like good like african drumming on that song mm -hmm. so he produced it but then also had some live instrumentation on there so that's the extent to which that influences my 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 music also i love that i'm involved in uh in my culture, mm. you know, being a part of that group. Um, and because we meet weekly, too, it just keeps me sharp all the mm. time. Like, I'm listening to music. I am, you know, we'll be in practice, and I'm like, I have my phone to the side because someone who plays something really, really good, and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, we're going to we're gonna have to produce that. That sounds really yeah. good. So, yeah, that's, that's the extent to which it, it aids my music. So when you're, like, collaborating or in the creative process with somebody, Yeah. When you're collaborating with whether it's artists, producers, or writers, what is like your must have vibe in the studio? Like, what are you looking for, like a specific energy or looking to be inspired? What makes you say, yes, like we can work together? I think people who are, who want to see a song completed. Mm. I think artists, we have a bad habit of sitting on music. Mm. And I want the people that I'm collaborating to, um, be as invested um 
just to be invested. I'm not even going to say as invested as I am. Because like I said, it's an artist thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like that too. We just sit on music. And um, this, in the past year or so, I've been changing that. I've been releasing music like pretty consistently and just not holding on to stuff. Yeah. Okay, so um, I want to get into community. Like how important has community been for you? Whether it's family, friends, colleagues, friendships, relationship. Like how has that support you've received impacted your career and like kind of artistic journey um i feel like historically i've tried to pursue community mm -hmm. outside of my family mm. um and then through f like friends and even like the wider community but over time i've realized like family is really important mm -hmm. and when it comes to my friends too i have to be my friends are basically family to me but you know i i need friends that are genuine and friends that want to grow mm -hmm. i get tired easily when i'm around people who don't have a sense of like like they want something more than where they're at like there's something uninspiring about that so for me like family and friendships are like super important and like just keeping me grounded and like i'm the kind of person you, if if you came to me and you're like Hey, so recently, like, I bought a home, actually. It cost, like, three minutes. I'm, like, I literally get excited mm -hmm. because I want people to show me the possibilities of, like, what there is, you know, to life. So that's why, that's why I keep those people close to me. Okay. Um, what's the next question is, so, recently in the industry, there's been a lot of talk and allegations mm -hmm. against hip-hop artists mm -hmm. um, and the rap scene. So... How do you maintain your authenticity with everything kind of going on? Hmm. Maintain your authenticity. Um, interesting. Could you break that down? Like, in a world where, like, people may have a perception about hip-hop and rappers and then with all oh. the allegations going on, like, how do you kind of stay true to who you are? Yes. In, like those kind of spaces where people may already have a perception before you even nice like nice, oh nice. he's Selassie draw he's a rapper oh, okay like you know yeah, yeah 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 um i try not to let what i do in music and the music industry be dictated by like what is going on you mm -hmm. know what i mean like even when i'm invested in an artist i try to be invested in their music and not not try to copy what they're doing because at the end of the day like we don't always know these people right mm -hmm. so i try to make sure that i'm doing the same where i'm not aligning myself with certain people certain trends certain industry standards which there's a lot of industry standards that you know you can't just like live your life by because mm -hmm. you're going to be in, in big trouble like the music industry is like pretty toxic if people don't want to talk about mm -hmm. it like it can be a toxic place and there's a lot of things that need to change and you would be surprised at things that are standard that if you actually you know start to make those your own standards mm -hmm. like you will be in big trouble okay. like just as a person for yourself and even with other people so yeah i try to live by my own rules for sure. Okay, so you've been compared a lot to Jay-Z. And when yeah. I was listening, <laughs> I was like, yeah. He's... So how does, like, that compliment feel? Like, what? how do you feel when you constantly hear that from people? When I was a little younger, I used to be so, like, bothered about it. Because mm -hmm. it's hip-hop. I have to be unique. I have to have my own voice. Like, if you tell me I sound like someone, oh, boy. Like, mm -hmm. that's, that's a problem. That's not good. Until I realized... Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not even it's not the music it's it's your literal voice because mm -hmm. one time <laughs> we were i don't know where we were but i just laughed i just laughed i just chuckled mm -hmm. and then the person next to me turned he's like dude you sound like jay-z and i'm like <laughs> off my laugh i sound like jay-z i was like okay i really can't control yeah, this yeah, yeah. so that's what they mean so once i started to get that i was like oh it's not a big deal they're not saying you're copying jay-z style they mean like your literal Temper, like the tone of your voice and mm -hmm. everything just sounds like Jay-Z. Okay. Yeah. If you were like to close your eyes or to delve into like a deep thought right now, okay. and maybe you transported yourself to like the like somewhere in the world, maybe it's a favorite place, or maybe it's like a, a world that you create yourself. Can you describe like your five senses? So what do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? What do you feel? And what do you taste in that moment? 
Hmm. <laughs> That's a tough one. Um, so we can start off with what do you see? I see a cloud and I see a bird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what do you hear? Hear? Si nothing. It's just silence. Just silence? Yeah. <laughs> silence. And what do you smell? Like fresh winter. I don't know if that makes okay. sense. Like, okay. You know when it's like freezing, but uh -huh. it's so fresh? Probably because there's not people outside. And yeah. Yeah. Like COVID, when everyone had to be <laughs> indoors. Not COVID. <laughs> yeah. Like, everything was just fresh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and what do you feel? What do I feel? Um, free. Okay. Just like chill, super relaxed, mm -hmm. not afraid to be floating in the clouds. Yeah. In winter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking yeah. that. And what do you taste in that moment? What do I taste? Mm -hmm. Ice. <laughs> Ice. Ice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Water. Okay. And so your music reflects a strong connection to Edmonton. I was listening to one of your tracks. I don't rem remember which one it was, but you like seven, eight, zero. Mm -hmm. Like you really give a shout out to the city. How do you feel like Edmonton has played a role in shaping you and your music? Um, it became my home. Like once once I left Ghana, like this became my second home. And that's just me trying to embrace it and trying to be more connected with who I am. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Okay. So... Um, I was listening to your song, Gotta Wonder, mm -hmm. and one of the lyrics you said, and I gotta wonder if I was enough for you. Can you take us behind, like, the scenes or the process? Like, what were you thinking when you were, read, like, writing that? So that song is, um, it's really about growth. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I'm beating myself up, like, Oh, like I was so crappy as a person and I was never good for you and I'm so sorry. No, it's more like now that we're not together, mm -hmm. I wasn't a crappy person, but maybe this is how I could have been a better person. So self-awareness. Self-awareness. <laughs> self-realization. <laughs> yeah, self-realization. It's like not something that like the other person has complained about. Uh -huh. It's just me coming to a realization. Oh, like you thought you knew. You don't know this. Yeah. And then, yeah, just wanted to share that with another. Okay. All right. Is that, is that vague or like? No, it's not it vague. Makes no, okay. it makes sense. It okay. makes sense. No, it like, yeah, I think you clarified what you were okay. saying. Okay. Okay. So next up, you finally get to ask your question. Yay. <laughs> what okay. do you get to, wild card. What do you get to ask me? Okay. Ooh, I don't even know what you're going to ask I, me. Do I get just one or do I get a couple questions? Let's give you two two hmm Ooh. okay okay, okay. so you seem to value travel a lot oh, yes um, i was ready to fly it's it's really inspiring to see to be honest <laughs> okay. um i talked to a mutual friend he mm -hmm. was like oh did you know like she went to senegal and see, she this did is why this i love traveling because nobody knows where i am <laughs> <laughs> and he was telling me about i was like oh that's awesome and mm -hmm. he we actually started talking about the importance of traveling and stuff so mm -hmm. like i said it's really inspiring to see um how do you decide what your next destination is going to be and like have you have you decided that you know already mm. how, how do you decide where you're going to go next um for senegal and gambia i've been wanting to go for a long time like probably since like 2016 2017 i wrote tweets about it i spoke about it like it's really something I've been wanting to do and go for mm -hmm. so long. I've been in love with the culture. I've been like, I have a Gambian auntie. I've been involved with the culture and love the food. So that was like, it was just like, I really wanted to go to another part of the continent. Mm -hmm. um, for how I figure out where next to travel, I think it's just the mood and feeling. Like, what do I want to, like, I curate my outfits based on where I'm going. <laughs> right. So... Like, whatever I feel like, mm, I'm feeling like I want to be at this continent or I'm feeling like I need to be at this certain place. Like, it's just very much dependent on mood. Sun is a real big factor. Because as much as so we you, get sun uh -huh. here, it's not the same as, like, being on a beach somewhere across the world. And also, I love the feeling of going somewhere where there's sand. love sand in my feet. And when I see palm trees, I am, like, relaxed. <laughs> so, like, I'm thinking, where are the palm trees at? How can I get there? Yeah. Yeah. So what's your, um, I'm going to cheat a little bit and still consider this the same question. <laughs> um, what is your, so what's your next travel destination or, or your dream destination? If you don't have, don't a, have a, 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 tra a next travel destination. Um, 
Okay, there's a few. So I'm because like if I say this, somebody will be like, ah, she's going there next. And I like to shock people, so you'll never know. Um, I would say I really want to Colombia, Colombia, Panama, interesting, Haiti, and. Honduras, yes. Okay. Those are like where I'm looking at. Like when I look at pictures of Haiti, like as much as there's perceptions about it, like it is a beautiful island. Uh -huh. Like people don't look at Haiti a, a lot, and I understand like you know political situation and all, but it is a beautiful country. I love Haitian food, so like I know if I go there, I'll be eating, I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a little bit closer than going all the way to the continent. Continent wise, um, I've been really wanting to go to South Africa. Kenya and Morocco, but there might be a wild card. Maybe I go to a different country that people aren't really looking at, and yeah. then I just go out there. So okay, mm -hmm. nice, nice. Um, this one is a music-related question. Ooh. Um, Levina, you know I had wait one, two, three, <laughs> four, seven, eight. Nine. I had nine questions. Okay, for let's you. just do the second one. <laughs> <laughs> if we had more time, I I would have gone through all I, these I questions. I believe you. I believe you. Um, what is that one thing that turns you from a casual listener to a fan of an artist? Um, I was talking to my sister about this like a few days ago. She loves to listen to just singles. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I like the song. I am an album person. Okay. Like, I need to listen from A to Z consistently, especially when I'm like working. I love to just like look at a body of work and like see what it's saying from A to Z. Mm -hmm. Like, how does it make me feel? What are the lyrics? Like... I really feel drawn and connected to it in that mm -hmm. way. So definitely like body of work. What makes me stick and stay? Hmm. I think it's like a lot of his messaging. I think that's why I listen to Ashaka, like as much as I don't understand Europa. From what I get and I understand, him. you're like, oh, okay, okay. Like, but then sometimes you just need a big, a good beat like Shali Poppy, like, Maybe he's not saying anything, you know, but like you're still yeah. like, oh, this is a vibe. So I think it just depends on mood. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes I feel like, okay, I want to be listening to this. I want to be listening to that. Yeah. So. so when you say albums, you mean like they need to have at least one album that you can list, play through? Or it's, you think they should be consistent with a couple it's, albums? It's not you know? that they have to have because there's some people like I might have loved this album, but maybe I wasn't feeling that. But like. They don't have to always have an album. I might like a single, but I really love albums more. Right. Albums are like very much what I really enjoy. Nice. But like, let's say somebody like Eric Bellinger, like I can listen to each of his bodies of work. Right. Like I can listen to, I know the all the albums from beginning to end. Wow. And because he's a songwriter, like uh -huh. I feel like there's something sentimental about his music and his sound. Mm -hmm. So because back in the day, la, 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 I used to like write music, which... Hopefully in the future we get back into... This is news to me. News, 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 new thing. What? Yeah, so I used to actually write music. So I feel like what? when I used to write music when I was younger, I would always like look at like, how was the structure? How was the lyrics? And like things like that. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, I talent. learned something. <laughs> yes. Okay, so next up, I know I didn't tell you this before, but I just want you to give me a little jingle, a little, a little freestyle for myself. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. It could be like, da, 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 chop it up. You know, something small. <laughs> something small. I, I wish I came <laughs> ready. <laughs> on uh, the spot, spontaneous. On the spot. Oh, my goodness. Oh. It's me and Lebanon in the interview. We a certified crew. Okay, keep Trying to cross eyes, something I wouldn't do. Mm-hmm. I'm like you, but maybe times two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll go with that. I wish <laughs> maybe like editing, we'll make it a little we'll, something. We'll, we'll polish it we'll up. Polish we'll it polish up. it up. All right. So <laughs> where can the people find you? Um, SelassieDraw.com mm -hmm. is my website. Mm -hmm. When you go there, it's usually, you know, the song that I'm promoting at the time or like what shows I have. Um, Instagram, Selassie Draw, Facebook, Selassie. Facebook. I had a page and some stuff happened. Mm -hmm. So like I lost the page. Long story short, I got a new page. You're mm -hmm. gonna see it. It's got like this many followers. <laughs> so if you see that page, follow it. Okay. Um X, um, TikTok, everything is just the last you draw. Um, yeah, got lots of music. Okay. Sure. All right, sounds good. 
So it's been a pleasure getting to know you. Thank you. Thank you for coming to Chop It Up 11 So we chopped it up small, small. Hey. <laughs> hey. So thank you so much for watching and watch out for our next episode where we come with another person who's going to, we're going to delve into their story and be inspired by them. Have a great rest of the day or evening wherever you are. Bye. Peace.